Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to welcome the British High Commissioner to South Africa, Dame Judith McGregor. Good morning, ma'am. <laughs> Good morning. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be on Jacaranda Radio. Thank <laughs> you. Now, you've been here how long now? Three years, eh? Hey? I have. And are you missing home already? <laughs> <laughs> you know, on a lovely sunny morning in Hauteng, I don't miss the weather at all. <laughs> Yeah, that's the nice thing. We were just talking about one of our top uh, sportscasters, uh, Bob Skinstad. He used to be a Springbok, so he's now moved his entire family to the United Kingdom. He said uh, life there is just something he prefers to South Africa. Now, what is the message you send back to uh, the people in England? Because obviously there are all these misconceptions about South Africa. Are we falling apart in the giraffes in the streets, that kind of thing? <laughs> well, people certainly come to see your giraffes. Um, <laughs> True. I think I, I relay back very strongly a message of opportunity, actually. Um, you know, as it happens, both the UK and South Africa have got some interesting political situations at Amen. the moment. Very lively, very sort of um, uh, a lot of strong views and um, policy changes taking place. But I think uh, I, I talk about opportunity. Uh, young country here, young democracy, um, a lot of opportunities in trade and investment. British business actually increasingly strongly mm-hmm. here. Uh, we're still remaining the largest single investor in yes. South Africa. Yes. And one of the things I know we will talk about is just the educational opportunities yep. between our two countries. We have to get to that. And before I, I have a little surprise for you, but before we get there, I'm going to ask you about Brexit. Because just like a couple of days ago, like four million people signed a petition saying listen, we want to stay in the European Union. So, like, it's a big thing. Are you pro or you anti? Do you, want to, <laughs> do you want to leave or stay? Like, personally, your personal views? The government made it clear that its recommendation to the people in June, on 23rd of June, was to stay inside the European Union. But the government, but the people, decisively voted to leave the European Union. So, Mrs May, our new Prime Minister, has made it very clear that that's what we're going to do, that's what we're going to take forward. And it's all, you know, all guns blazing on that at the moment. Yeah, now obviously the question is how? Yep. What now? Because now you're going to hammer this out. Yes, it is. And I think Mrs May herself has made it clear that it's not going to be straightforward. After many decades of European Union membership, it's very much part of our lives in many, many ways. Our trade, our investment, our education, our regulations. But, uh, you know, we're a great global power. We remain still uh, a country that spends, you know, almost, well, the most inside the G7 on aid and development and also on defence. We're part of all the important multilateral organisations. We're going to continue and expand that. Well, I hope our government is treating you well, because I remember the relations was, there was cooling down a couple of years ago, but are we, are we treating the United Kingdom well? I'm just checking because I'm seeing Jacob Zuma later in China. <laughs> I saw him quite briefly. I feel very well treated. And I think I'd say our relationship is definitely on and up. If you look at all the activities that we're doing, um, we had our bilateral forum last autumn. We had the largest number of ministers we've ever had present. All the areas of cooperation, yeah, they're going very, very well. Now, Mum, I have a bit of a surprise for you. Um, our intern has been practicing his English. It was terrible, terrible, terrible English. <laughs> right. He's been practicing it for four weeks just for you. <laughs> and we, we gave him the world's most difficult poem. Now, it says, if you could pronounce correctly every word in this poem, you will be speaking English better than 90% of the native English speakers in the world. <laughs> so I'm going to bring him in, and you, you, you can tell me if you're happy or not. Mm-hmm. With his not. pronunciation? Yeah, mm. with his pronunciation. That's a difficult word as well. The pronunciation <laughs> and elocution. <laughs> If you're not happy, it's it's to the tower with him, I say. <laughs> with his head! <laughs> Carl! Just call him in here. Where is he? We're going to Facebook this live. Complimentary breakfast Facebook page. Here we go, Mom. And he's that's, dressed up and uh, everything. That is, uh, that's our intern, Carl. Call me so, Carl. He's been practicing his elocution. The world's most difficult English poem, Mom. Are you ready for this? I'm absolutely ready and very impressed by how he looks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> go, Carl. Dearest creature in creation, study English pronunciation. I will teach you in my verse. Sounds like corpse calls 
worse and worse. Just compare heart, beard and herd, dies, diet, lord and word, sword and sword, retain and Britain, mind the latter how it's written. Marriage, foliage, mirage and age, query does not rhyme with very, nor does fury sound like bury. Dost, lost, po, post and doth, cloth, loth. Job, nom, Uh-oh. bosom, transom, oath. Finally, which rhymes with enough? Though, through, plough, or dough, or cough. Hiccup has the sound of cup. My advice is to give up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. You look so relieved. Yes, sir. <laughs> Terrible delivery, but how was the pronunciation? The pronunciation was fabulous. Thank you so much. I mean, in the year of 400 years since Shakespeare died, you know, it's been a great year of celebrating Shakespeare. It is a wonder that people can speak English as well as they can because it's so irregular. (laughs) But uh, that was spectacularly good. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. We can keep him? I think you can do more than keep him. You can give him a rise. (laughs) Hey! Well! What about a raise? Hey, he just got his rise. <laughs> like, <it's> still, uh... <laughs> Dame Judas is with us this morning. We need to talk about the, this British Chevening Scholarship. And yep. this is just incredible. Mm. You with us still for a little while? I am. And it, uh, it, Carl will now serve as your personal butler. Whatever you need, <laughs> he, will look, he will look after you, my, my dear Dame Judas. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Sestino, you have a complimentary breakfast.